in this video, we're going to add a couple of routes and views to the starter project that's being created by Angular CLI. If I were to just run ng-serve here, I'm going to get a simple uh, application. We can see what that looks like. It's just the usual app you see when you create a new Angular CLI project. There's no routing enabled there, but uh, we're going to add that now. Here's what the app looks like. Pretty bare bones, like you would expect it. But now let's switch back to our editor and add the routing. OK, so what's the routing that we needed? We wanted two routes and two views. The first one is the home route, and the second is the settings route. So I'm going to pass them both as objects into this routes array. Now, each one of these, like we've seen, is an object of type route. Right, so this is a route array, so each one of these is of type route. So when you try to create an object here and you do control space, you're going to see all the properties of the route that you can pass in. And uh, we looked at two properties, one was the path and one was the component. Right, So those are the two things which are required to be able to match a URL to a component. You're basically telling Angular, hey, when this URL is accessed, load this component. It's as simple as that. So what we need to do now here is choose path. And uh, I'm going to set the path as uh, home for the first route. And I'm going to pass the component. And this is going to be the home component, right? I'm going to create that component. And I'm going to tell Angular to load that component when somebody says the page URL slash home. Similarly, when somebody accesses the page URL slash settings, I want the settings component to be shown. So I'm going to kill this here and create those two components. I want to create a home component and a settings component. So I'm going to say ng generate component uh, home. I'm going to get the home component created. And similarly, settings. And I'm going to get the settings component created. And here in my app module, you can see that both of them have been imported. Now what I'm going to do is copy these imports over because I'm going to use those two components to map my routes here. So the first route is going to be mapped to home component and the second route is going to be mapped to settings component. And believe it or not, this is it. Now when you access slash home, the home component is going to load. When you access slash settings, the settings component is going to load. But now the question is, where is it going to show, right? You've asked it to load, but Angular says, okay, I've got the home component. Now, where do I put it? I've got the settings component. Where do I put it? So in order to provide a window for Angular to put the component in the view, what I need to do is go to my app component.html and uh, I'm going to get rid of this, uh, all this stuff over here, except for one line. You see this line here that uh, Angular CLI has created? You didn't have this before, you remember? There was just that all, uh, you know, the bunch of links and the icon and all that stuff, but you didn't really see something called a router outlet. So this is something that Angular CLI has created now because we have asked it to support routing. And turns out this is required for Angular to know where to put the component that you want it to. So here I'm saying, hey, Angular, when somebody accesses slash home, load the home component. And Angular says, okay, I got it. I'm going to load the home component and the home component probably says home works or something like that. That's what it typically does. Yeah. So home works. It's there. Now, where do you put this paragraph? Where does Angular put that paragraph in there? So the way Angular knows where to put the paragraph is by looking at this particular directive called router outlet, this particular component called router outlet. When Angular sees this, it's going to inject the contents of the component that it's loaded, either here or here, into this router outlet, which is somewhere over here. Okay, so now when you access slash home, Angular is going to load the home component and plug it into the router outlet. When you access slash settings, Angular is going to load the settings component and plug it into the router, out, router outlet, and that's how it works. So I'm going to do a ng serve again. And now we're going to switch to the browser. And here, I'm going to refresh the page. And now, notice what happens. The other markup is gone because I've removed it. Notice what happens when I do a slash home. 
you see here I get the home component and then I access slash settings I get the settings component so everything works like you expect it to the angular routing framework is looking at the URL this portion of the URL and then finding out which component to load from this route configuration that you've passed over here and then once it's identified that component it is going to render the component in this router outlet wherever it finds it in that in that root component okay so this is how you create routes and then map it to different urls there is one problem here when i load the page without any routes you see here nothing works now what if I want home to be the default? When somebody accesses the URL directly, I just wanted to go directly to slash home. How do I do that? We'll take a look at that in the next video.